I want to comment on a few of your comments and um, for fear of trampling on um, what is it, Godwin's law, which we're told is very unwise, uh, I, I, I'd like to start by referring you to the judges at Nuremberg who made it very clear that following orders was not a reasonable defence. Um, we can think of Hess who said, well, I was just following orders in Auschwitz. But um, people, uh, the, the, the Nuremberg judges took the view that people were not obliged to be killers. Uh, that um, people were worried that if they did not follow orders, they would be physically harmed, um, and therefore they participated in mass murder. But those who refused, uh, as Doris Bergen notes, um, were simply transferred to... Uh, other jobs, they were, they were given other assignments. Uh, to this day, said Doris Bergen, no one has found an example of a German who was executed for, for refusing to take part in the killing of Jews or other civilians. Um, and, th and that really is the, is, 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 is the issue why the argument about, um, about following orders doesn't have any weight. Now, of course, you could argue that it, it may have only been a matter of time before refusing to do a job um, would end up uh, eventually in a loss of life. Um, but the war didn't go on that long. The same issues could be uh, seen in the present um, activity in um, the Russian-Ukrainian conflict where particularly belonging to the Wagner Brigade, seems to involve a death sentence if you refuse to carry out the atrocities which are demanded of you. But so, to go to um, the, uh, the, the, the issues I'm looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking really of um, Fiona Bruce and Kiwi Pete John Taylor, uh, points out that um, he's, strange, he's surprised that um, journalists and pundits are not supporting Fiona Bruce. Unlike uh, Julia Lopez, who says that well, she's being very professional, she's doing her job. Well, it seems particularly stupid to do your job and read out a statement with which you fundamentally disagree. Or if she doesn't disagree, then she should never have been representing a charity that um, focuses on domestic abuse. Domestic, domestic abuse, even a one-off, is still domestic abuse. To defend Stanley Johnson, to acknowledge that his friends admitted that the beating took place. So to, to um, acknowledge that she thought the beating took place, but was only a one-off, is to condone domestic abuse. It's unprincipled. Now, if, that, if I were given that piece of paper to read, I wouldn't read it. She has a choice. She has a choice. And uh, similarly, the BBC executives who produced that bit of paper, were they mad? What on earth were they doing? Another um, comment that you've sent uh, from a uh, person called Epincian um, uh, says, uh, we... Uh, we, we saw a masterclass in this art of obfuscation. Uh, so uh, Epincion is presumably also recognising that Julia Lopez is simply there to say nothing. Uh, rather like Graziano in The Merchant of Venice, when for saying, um, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sure, um, for uh, if, if he said nothing, would turn my ears to... Um, uh, to dust or something. Um, uh, Graziano speaks an infinite deal of nothing. Well, so does uh, Julia Lopez. Um, Julia Lopez, presumably like Graziano, is playing the fool. Epincion says, we saw a masterclass in this art with the answers given by Ofcom Chief Executive Dame Melanie Dawes to questions from John Nicholson, MP, in a House of Commons committee hearing. He quoted verbatim to her the Ofcom rules that no MP may host a news programme and then asked why Ofcom allowed two Tory MPs to host a regular news programme on GB News and indeed recently interviewed the Chancellor. 
she answered with an absolute blizzard of non-answers that the rules he quoted um, that the rule he quoted was only for news programmes and that she was unclear that the programme these two Tory MPs host is a news programme or indeed that GB News as a whole is a news channel but that she would check and get back to Mr Nicholson which is Ofcom speak for the checkers in the post. I, I must say I entirely salute uh, Pincium for recognising that, uh, that and for picking up um, those questions of John Nicholson who is a very worthy MP, we've been in touch and uh, SMP MP, and he um, is sitting on the committee for the DCMS, still called the DCMS, despite the fact that the uh, Secretary of State is now only in charge of three of those acronyms, uh, or three of those letters that form that acronym. I, I, I'm so confused by the entire um, ministry. But um, uh, John Nicholson is right to raise that issue. Uh, I s presume he's talking about Nadine Dorries and Jacob Rees-Mogg. There may be others, um, but it is absolutely right. Um, Ofcom is behaving like a like a like 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 a nonce. It's um, it's facilitating corruption. And uh, I I would like to know what exactly is Dame Melanie Dawes doing with her um, executive position. She doesn't seem to be doing very much, does she? If she cannot, if she cannot even um, answer a simple question, and if she doesn't know what, um, uh, what sort of programme GB News is, uh, what sort of programme is it GB News? GB News or um, Talk TV is. Uh, it seems absurd. Sitting MPs should definitely be brought on to media. They should not be hosting media. And to host a news programme and to be a sitting MP is to be effectively promoting a, 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 an election campaign um, and should be budgeted as such. Um, so, you know, these people should be questioned not only by Ofcom, but they should also be questioned by those people who are supervising the next election.